What's happening, your friendos? Welcome back to the Tropical Garage. My name's Troy, and today we're gonna to be doing a frogless video. Um, spoiler alert. Um, this is gonna be a tutorial slash update on the vent systems in the custom enclosure builds that I do. Uh, if you guys haven't seen those videos or haven't built your own tank, go check out those videos. Um, it's really easy to do. The hard part was the vent system, the door vent and the top vent. They're really annoying to do. It's really hard to make clean, um, make look clean. And it's just, it's overall the most annoying part of the whole process. This video is gonna be about how to do those vents without using silicone. So it's a much, much cleaner result, a much, much easier result. Um, result? No, much easier process. I don't know what I'm saying. This is like the 10th time I've done this intro. So. Um, I'd try my best not to ramble on. I could talk for another four or five minutes. We all know that, we all hate that. So um, without further ado, let's just get into the video and watch it. We're gonna get started on the door vent first. And you can see here, I have a piece of the L channel already measured and cut to size. And you're gonna wanna take the 3M Scotch Extreme double-sided tape. It's a black tape with a red backing. And you're just gonna wanna run it down the length of one side um, and this is like the back side of the channel you don't want to have it on both both pieces just the one um, and then you're going to want to trim it off with a sharp razor blade or exacto blade whatever you've got uh, and be sure to save the trimming because more than likely you're going to need to use it on another piece the same width um, once you have that firmly attached you're going to want to strip off the red backing uh, you can see here I'm having a little bit of trouble, but uh, have no fear. We will get it off eventually. <laughs> and uh, you can see here, peel it off. And what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to have this double-sided tape on the front. So you want to have it not go on the top because that can mess with the door measurement. So you're just going to want to have that on the front there. Um, and this piece is really just to cover the support piece that I'm gonna show you here in the back. Um, since the door track is wider than the quarter inch piece of glass, it wants to kind of move back and forth. Um, so this support piece that I just taped in using the same method with the trimming the three double-sided tape um, is really just to support that door track. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take some more of that tape and um, put it on the actual side pieces of the glass and repeat the steps on the other side. And you can see here the tape is wider than the glass, so you will have to do a little trimming, which I'll show you here in a second. It um, doesn't have to be perfect. No one's going to see it. There's going to be stuff over top of it, but you just want to have something for that mesh to adhere to. And um, yeah, you can see here my trimming is rather sloppy, but it gets the job done. And here on the back side, I laid down the tape as well. And you're again, just obviously the tape is wider than the glass. So you're gonna be trimming it down, which you see here. And like I said, I always save the trimming because more than likely you can use it on either the glass or more of the styrene tracking. And here you see I have the lower door track already cut to size. Um, and I've already went ahead and trimmed down the double-sided tape. So I'm just gonna peel off the backing. And I also have the mesh 
cut to the same width. So it's the, the width of the vent, but I do make it um, wider as far as, or I guess the depth from front to back. So it's just easy to trim off. Um, and when you place it on this double-sided tape, you want to just cover about half of the of the door track. So you want to leave half um, uncovered by the mesh so you can get the good contact point on the styrene. Um, but you do want to have the mesh sort of touching where it would touch the styrene as well, um, just for a nice secure bond. Um, you're going to want to go ahead and peel off that red backing of the pieces that are trimmed on the glass and just go ahead and place that door track down. Now, right, right here on the front spot, you're going tape to, to the styrene uh, for a nice secure bond. And I always do this front side first. I kind of line up the uh, e, e channel with the door track. Uh, once I get each side lined up, then I kind of push down on it for a secure bond. And then I kind of make sure that the vent or the mesh is uh, nice and smooth and doesn't have any creases or folds or anything in it. And then I just kind of seal all the edges. And then I take a razor blade and just trim it off for a very nice and neat look. And after this is done, you're going to take another piece of the L channel. And I do put the double-sided tape on the top on this one. So basically you're sandwiching the mesh in between the L channel and the glass. Um, so it's not gonna come loose and it's protected and everything. Uh, here on the sides, this is optional, but I just think it looks a little nicer having it all plastic. Um, so I just cut a little piece of that L channel, I split it in half and then just place it right on that double-sided tape. If it doesn't adhere to the double-sided tape, you can just take a piece, uh, a little dab of super glue and just kind of glue it to the double-sided tape. Now this next part, I also use the double-sided tape to actually hold the door tracks onto the glass as well. What I noticed in some of the older tanks I built is that the silicone doesn't bond really well to the door track. Um, you can pull it off pretty easily if you, I mean, with a little bit of, you know, strength, um, where I don't seem to be able to pull it off with the double-sided tape. So I know silicone bonds well to glass, but it doesn't bond very well to the plastic tracking. I think in this situation, the double-sided tape actually is a overall better bond between these two materials. Um, and I will say it's most important here when you're putting these tracks on to have the corner E-tracks line up perfectly. That way when the doors close, they close all the way to the edge with no bumping or anything. And now we're moving on to the top vent, which is normally the most annoying vent to kind of finish these tanks out with. Uh, and I do apologize for the blurriness, but uh, my camera was having a hard time figuring out what it wanted to focus on. But you can see here, I have a piece of the double-sided tape on that back edge, and I've just uh, sort of smoothed it out and kind of gave it a firm contact point with the glass. Just take your razor blade, and if you do this part nice and neat in one clean cut, like I do here, um, you can literally just take that piece you trimmed off and apply it to the other side, um, which is going to be the front side of the vent. And the same way, just attach it to the glass. You can clean the glass with um, you know, rubbing alcohol if you'd like before, just for a nice clean contact point. Um, but uh, I don't know if it's completely necessary. Um, and just like you did on the back side here, take a razor blade and trim it off. And do save this as well because you can use this for the side pieces. Um, obviously, the sides are a lot shorter, but still, you know, well, this tape is kind of expensive, so it's best not to waste it. It's about twenty bucks for a big roll of it. Um, you see, here I'm having quite a quite a time trimming that. But um, yep, on the sides, you just put put some tape down, um, go all the way to the edge, and then you literally just slice it. And you're going to want to repeat the process for the other side. And then what I like to do is I like to strip off this backside piece first. And again, I already have my, my screen cut to the width, um, maybe a little bigger than the width, I think, because I trim off the edge here on the side. Um, and then you just place it onto the back. Um, and you're going to want to smooth it out. Make sure, you're, again, your screen doesn't have any folds or creases or anything. Just hold it pretty straight and apply it. And you can see here, I have a bunch of uh, overlap, but we don't need to trim that yet. We'll do that later. Uh, then what I like to do is I like to fold that screen back and hold it in place with some duct tape. 
as you can see here, once we get a little clearer, um, and then I take off the sides, um, the backing on the sides and the backing on the front. I just don't like having all four exposed because you you can kind of get the, the mesh to catch on something and then it can kind of screw it all up. So this way I just have a little bit more order and it seems to come out neater. Um, and literally just, you know, place it down in the corners. Um, you know, you don't want to pull it too tight or it'll want to lift. So you just kind of roll it, just follow the line um, and make sure you're hitting those corners. Um, and then once it's in each corner, I smooth it out, take a razor blade and we're just going to trim off the excess here. Now, I have left on my tanks that I've done for myself, um, I've left them like this. You know, I know the screen's not going anywhere and I don't really care how it looks. I'm just, you know, rushing sometimes. Um, but for customers, when I build them tanks, I do like this. I take another piece of the L-Track and again, I sandwich the vent in between the two sides of tape. Um, so the tape here, the contact point is on the same contact point where the mesh is adhered to the glass. It's not on the top, it's on the side of the glass. So here you can see is a final look of the top vent. And here is the final look for your door vent. Overall, I just think it's a much, much cleaner look and no cure times, no harsh chemicals, no smells. Um, it's just a lot quicker, a lot cleaner and a heck of a lot easier. If you guys try this out, make sure you let me know in the comments down below um, if this helped you or not. And um, yeah, just let me know in the whole process. If you have any other tips or something you've noticed doing the same thing, just uh, let me know. All right, Rufuendos, that's gonna do it for this one. Hopefully you guys learned something in this one and hopefully seeing the whole new process is only gonna make more people want to make their own enclosures themselves because I do think that the this style enclosure is a much better fit for dart frogs than the standard Exoterra and Zoomed. So uh, that's just my opinion. But uh, as you can see here, this is me working on an old tank that I rescaped and did a new style background. It's the cork panel uh, shaved with a wire wheel and a drill. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a really quick, really cool, and a really easy background style that I think you guys will really enjoy. So uh, make sure to look for that video in the next couple of weeks. Uh, until the next one, Goldberg, out.